So talking about fintech again, uh, a classic uh, case study is uh, the question asked was, okay, which part of the banking business is dead and everyone uh, knows about it, but no one wants to talk about it. And I would like to pick on the deposit banking side. Right, so a question we asked uh, a number of audience, a number of uh, common man on the street is how excited do you feel that you've got a bank account in bank XYZ, right? I mean, have you ever woken up and said, yes, I've got a bank account in, you know, so-and-so bank? Really? N never? Uh, okay, so, you know, and, and that is what, you know, that is what the response we've been getting from everyone we ask. So no one really feels proud of the deposit relationship they've got with banks out there. And what that means is as soon as there is an alternate available, they're going to move away. So the challenge becomes, how do we create an emotional relationship, an emotional connection between banks and the consumers, where consumers see banks as providing value-added service, right? And, and we then brought up the point that let's understand what is, um, uh, you know, what is the comparative, how is the comparative landscape changing as a result of these fintech solutions and where is this competition coming from? So one, we established that you're not very excited about the deposit relationship you've got with your bank. You never wake up and say, yes, I've got a, a deposit bank account, right? A second question is I ask is, okay, so you must be getting a lot of returns on your savings account, right? Really? So nothing, huh? So, so you're not getting any returns or not much returns. But the bank is making money from your money? Really? Okay. So how do we create a more equitable, a more balanced system, right? I mean, thinking outside of the box. The example we give is uh, the, uh, moving on, right? I mean, so who's the, where's the competition coming from? Uh, so far, it was uh, this from within the banking segment, right? No longer that is the case. Now, if a person had $100, they used to keep $10 in their pocket and $90 used to go with uh, into deposits with banks. But now what is happening? Now Kareem has come out with their digital wallet and you know the customer is saying fine, I'll put $5 there. And PayPal is coming around and you know they're putting $10 there and Amazon is there and Uber is there and, and you know a number of these digital wallets are there and consumers are saying you know what, uh, be it Starbucks or be it Kareem, at least I'm getting a value added service, might as well put some money in their digital wallet uh, in, instead of my bank account, it's the same thing. So what's happened, what's happened gradually is $90 in bank account has become $60 only, for example, right? And that means your share of wallet as a bank has gone down without you even realizing, and it hasn't gone to other banks. Uh, uh, now, an argument would be, but you know what, Kareem is still putting it in the bank account. Well, yes and no. It's because they are in, in the banking system, they are doing business with the banking system, but not like you and me, where they're talking about small retail uh, depositors. They are coming out with, uh, you know, substantial money, negotiating power has changed. It may not all go into deposit, it may go into the investment management and so forth. So the fact remains that out of the $100, first you were getting 90, now it is down to 60. Your share of wallet has come down big time. One, two. Now think about it, you are, uh, you know, you're visiting a different market, you know, you are in Maldives and uh, you order Kareem, assuming Kareem is there and Kareem comes and, you know, it's a very reliable, convenient service, 10 p.m. at night uh, and, you know, Kareem charges you, I don't know, $5 and on top of it, in exchange, uh, for Forex, uh, you know, uh, exchange, they charge you another 50 cents extra. Do you mind? Uh, for most cons consumers, the answer is no, because, you know, I'm getting a value-added service in a new market where I don't understand, so I don't mind paying a little bit more. And now think about the bank trying to charge you. You get a notification from the bank that, uh, thank you so much, Miss uh, So-and-so, for doing business with us. Here is a checkbook. We are going to charge you, uh, you know, $10 extra for this checkbook. You and cry, right? Regulators will have to step in. Customers will be unhappy. So the message is, not only that your share of wallet is coming down, but your traditional sources of profits are under pressure as well. And your lunch is being eaten away by other innovative players, the likes of Airbnbs of the world and the Kareems of the world and Starbucks of the world, who are perceived as by consumers as providing value added service and therefore they don't mind paying a little bit extra. So what do we need to do? Well, again, it requires a change in mindset at the top. And a uh, number of markets, what we are seeing is deposit banking is being revolutionized. And the way it is being done is uh, through digital and a community proposition. What does that mean? 
Now, community proposition, what that means is, okay, I've got a bank account in bank A and I get a statement, right, every six months. And then I've got a bank account in bank B and bank B comes to me and says, okay, Mr. Nazim, uh, why don't you also share with us what your life's goals, values, aspirations are uh, for our information? And I'm like, okay. Uh, you know, I like uh, to promote affordable education uh, for all. Uh, I like to see job creation because, you know, youth says, uh, you know, unemployment is a big issue in emerging markets and so forth. And the bank goes away and say, okay, thank you very much. Now, three months later, four months later, uh, both banks come back. Bank A sends me a statement. It gets torn, goes in, in the trash can. Bank B sends me a note saying, Mr. Nazim, thank you for giving us business. And by the way, you also had indicated your preferences and values. Uh, we are glad to share that the bank did take that into account. And uh, on our asset strategy, uh, you know, we have prioritized SME segment. And over the last six months, uh, we've been able to finance uh, five SMEs that has resulted in creating 20 employment opportunities. Do you see the mindset difference? What would make you feel better, bank A or bank B? You know, your, of course, your, your, your reaction will be, you know, at least my, you know, without disturbing any banking convenience, my money is doing something good in the community. So might as well, you know, do more business with bank B. I'm building a relationship. I'm building an emotional connection with that bank, right? So choice to express a listening framework through which we are giving back control to consumers and they are ex able to express their priorities in terms of how they want to see their money being used by the bank. And the minute you start respecting that, you start seeing some good feedback and you know, your, your market share and customer acquisition goes up. Uh, similarly, another example I'll give. So the loyalty points, all of us have credit cards, right? So the loyalty points or the reward system that is there is what? Is restaurant discounts, is air miles, you know, and, and many of them go wasted. We don't even realize or we never, never qualify for that. I mean, the time for these kind of uh, irrelevant uh, uh, you know, irrelevant incentives is, is, uh, is history. What does that mean? Uh, in the markets that we are living in, uh, youth unemployment is a big issue, for example, right? And if your target market as a bank are millennials, then your target should be, how do I reach through millennials to their households? And what are the big pain points of millennials that you're trying to solve? And those are, of course, you know, uh, how do I get a good internship? How do I get good scholarships? How do I get into a good university? How do I get skills? How do I get, uh, you know, a better job? And therefore, if you're able to build a reward system from ground up in partnership with corporates in the local community that talks about X thousand internships, X thousand scholarships, the university discounts and so forth, then, you know, I mean, guess what's going to happen? You know, your, your kid, your, your, your teenager is going to come uh, to, to the dads and say, Baba, why are you banking with bank A? You know, if you're banking with bank B and you've got a gold card, then they give one internship to one member of your family. As a result of that internship, my admission into university becomes easier. There you get certain discounts as well. There's handholding and mentorship as well. Now that is value adding. That is creating an impact. So, so I guess, I guess, I guess the key message is, now, because of fintech solutions, it is possible to actually capture this data, mine this data using artificial intelligence and mobility as the primary tool to completely revamp, to completely transform how deposit banking is done. And this is what the students of Islamic finance need to look ahead. You know, just talking about Sharia products and Sharia governance is not good enough. Last 20 years was about new products, new solutions, governance and so forth. We've got that critical mass in place. Next 15 years is about fintegration. How do you combine your Islamic finance knowledge with the fintech solutions that are coming up? Thank you very much.